Hi, I'm Dave Orzon. You're watching PHTV4. This is Bookshelf. And on Bookshelf, uh, we recommend a variety of books from a variety of categories. With me today is a special guest co-host, Janine Kakmar, who's the head of public services at Palos Heights Library. And uh, this is a kind of a special bookshelf because we're going to recommend, because, because you're here, of course, but also because uh, this fall, there's a, a lot of big name authors, a lot of great books coming out. So yeah. kind of an expanded fall preview. Right. Fall is the is the is the Christmas time for book publishers. That's when they want to get all of their big authors out, all the big titles, big sellers, because they are getting ready for the holidays. Yeah. yeah. This year has been a little different because things have been pushed back a lot, and which we'll talk about right. later. Right. And yeah. we're going to get some authors who haven't written in a few years. Oh or my gosh! Longer, some so. big names, folks. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. So. Let's start off first with a book out uh, September. This is in the espionage, uh, spy, thriller, suspense category. Uh, what do you have, Jeanine? I have um, the new book by Deanna Rayburn. She is um, she wrote she's writing her new book is Killers of a Certain Age, and many of you might know this author from her uh, Veronica Speedwell series, um, which some say are the best historical mysteries around. But that's that's saying a lot. But um, she's taken a quick break from Victoria, England to bring this uh, contemporary story of four assassins on the, on the verge of retirement. So um, you have these four women who are sent to this island for this huge retirement bash. And um, then when they get to the island, they see one of their co-workers, another assassin there on the island, and they know that, uh-oh, something's, something's up. Afoot. So they know that this trip is a trap and that the company is t attempting to tie up loose ends. So it's um, supposed to be a little bit funny, tongue in cheek, and also pretty exciting. So it it's a, sounds like a great fall read. It sounds like a fun read, yeah. for sure. Very fun yeah, read. Absolutely. All right, we'll do a major gear shift. Uh, we're going to jump to a title coming out in October. Uh, hopefully this category works for you. Nonfiction, neuro, cognitive neuroscience, and neuropsychology. And I know that's kind of a mouthful, but the topic here is very, very interesting. It is. She's a very readable author. This yeah. is on Temple Grandin's new book. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Temple, Temple Grandin, she is a scientist, a professor, an animal behaviorist, and a person who, a high-functioning person with autism. And this is, um, she, 25 years ago, she came out with her first book, Thinking in Pictures. Um, which she um, talks about her experience as being a person with autism. And in this new book, um, she expands on the theme celebrating the visual and spatial cognition, the intuitive design, and the critical importance of those who think differently. And she, she really has put in the spotlight on, um, on people with autism, how they think. Um, she's led so many different um, studies that have made many, many discoveries. So. And her, her um, ability to uh, work with animals and um, the things that she does, because she has she's able to see things that people aren't able to see, or she sees things indifferently. And that's how she wants everybody to work with people who have autism, that they're just, they just see things differently than you. That's all that it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So she's really worked to take away the stigma um, from, from that label. And I think you mentioned earlier, uh, despite the category label, it's actually readable. It's written everybody. Oh, very but readable. She for she, yeah, person. she's a professor, but she's very, very readable. In fact, HBO made a movie about her, an Emmy Award winning movie, and um, it's it's a great movie. It's a great great thing to read, folks. If you you know you want to see a different side to diff something you thought you know about you knew about You've but heard you, of. Yeah. yeah. And um, she really brings a, a to a, a new light to it. Okay. We're going to do another major gear shift. I mean, we're on a roller coaster ride here from espionage, suspense thriller to cognitive neuroscience. And now we're going to Hang on. shift gears again, folks. Hang on. Near future category, real world dystopia, big name author here. Right. Celeste Ning is back with her um, new book, Our Missing Hearts. Now, you got most of you folks recognize this name because she wrote the book Little Fires Everywhere, which was adapted to an um, Emmy-nominated film uh, a Hulu series on Hulu um, and she takes her relatively familiar setup which she focuses on families race and relationships and she takes it to a whole new level in this book um, and in um, Our Missing Hearts she continues to track the growing divide between Americans to the intimate relationships of well-crafted characters um, but as these rifts have escalated to a nationwide horror 
show of brazen xenophobia, racism, and violence, her storytelling style has likewise amplified to, to contend with these dangers. So her third novel veers into d a dystopian territory, but just a little bit. And as always, she brings deep compassion to her characters. I've heard uh, one publisher's comment likened it to, not in plot storyline, but style to like The Handmaid's Tale mm -hmm. in terms of Yeah, dystopian, it's a dystopian, but it's like a really real world dystopian. Feels real now. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, the next category we're going to take a look at is a blend of suspense, love story, and becoming, becoming self. Yeah, and How this, you discover that. Right, and it's another huge author. Jody, Big author. Jody Picoult. Jody Picoult, uh, interesting because not, I don't think, typical of her partners up with a, another author here. So Jody Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan uh, have a book coming out, Mad Honey. Uh, Mad Honey is the story of, uh, well, a, a young woman is killed in a small town in Adams, New Hampshire. Two newly transplanted families find themselves looking to the past for answers. So Mad Honey is a complicated mix of murder mystery, psychological suspense, and unexpected romance. Kind mm -hmm. of a unique blend. Yeah, it is because Jodi Picoult, her last several books have been just very, uh, books on very timely topics that have been in, mm -hmm. in the news, like... Um, Oh, I don't know. Well, the real world issues that people deal with, whether right. it's health related, right, race or, relations, yeah. yeah, things like you know, things that have been in the, in the news. So this should seems like it's maybe a veer. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to read and find out. Next category, I love the category label here. Uh, I've never read this author. Uh, it makes me want to read it. We've so, got, she, so she's a mysterious mystery writer. For, for me, you. absolutely. <laughs> uh, atmospheric murder mystery category. Uh, Carlene O'Connor. Yeah. What have you got? Well, Carlene O'Connor is not that mysterious. She's been around. She's had a couple of uh, very cozy mystery series. But her new one, No Strangers Here, is the first book in a planned series that she, she's planning to write about County Carry. It's a County Carry mystery. That's what they call them. And this one is a bit darker and more serious than her other books. And um, it's a bit of a mashup between Louise Penny and Tana French. Works for me. Yeah. Both very this, good authors. Right. And this moody small town mystery starts with the death of Jimmy O'Reilly, whose body was discovered leaning against a boulder facing the sea. They don't know if it's murder or suicide, but there's lots of family secrets to be re revealed. So, Sounds interesting. Yeah. I, I like it. I'll, I'll put it on my list. We're going to jump to another category, uh, another shift again. Stay on the roller coaster with us. This is Supernatural Psychological Thriller. Uh, this is a book by Claudia Lux, and it's titled Sign Here. Uh, are you ready? The main character's name is Peyote Trip. Yes, that is his actual name. That's funny, yeah. Uh, Very he's clever. on the cusp of a huge promotion, but you're not going to like where this promotion's coming. He just needs to get one more member of the wealthy Harrison family to sign their soul away. Peyote, you see, is a bureaucrat on the fifth floor of hell, which is basically the world's absolute worst corporate office. Hmm. <laughs> if I worked in that environment, it sounds like a place. There are probably others who are like, oh, really? <laughs> uh, his fiendish plot goes awry, and Claudia Lux is entertaining you know, sneakily poignant debut thriller. So it, I mean, it sounds like a fun read, kind of light, but uh, an interesting twist here. Yes, yes. Working on the fifth floor of hell. I think we all f felt like that once in a while. <laughs> Next category, we're going to shift gears, we're going to radical shift here. We're going to leave the, the fifth floor of hell behind. We're moving to a biography category, biography of a founding father of the American Revolution, another big name author here. Stacy Schiff, mm -hmm. yeah, she, she's great. Yeah, the revolutionary Samuel Adams. Um, she's a Pulitzer Prize winning author. She's written you know, several well-researched books, very well written. Uh, this time she's turning her attention to Samuel Adams. Samuel Adams, the mastermind of the Boston Tea Party, uh, one of the founding fathers, and according to her text, one of the most wanted men in colonial America. Yeah, I, like I said to you earlier, I don't, I don't, I've never thought of him that way. No. Um, I mean, you only kind of hear, I mean, I, at least I've, in the history that I've r read, that, you know, only a Boston Tea Party, but, right. but the most wanted man in colonial America, that's got to say something. It's a good hook. Yeah. Right. Founding Fathers, we think of Adams, Jefferson, Washington, that group. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to this, especially in her hands. I think right. Stacey Schiff um, uh, has written many nonfiction books. Um, the one, which is in uh, Salem, 1692, was one that I read of hers in the past, and she's very readable. 
great speaker too. I saw her in person speaking. And, um, it's a good, good author. I'm looking forward good to this. Good book to look forward yeah. to. All right, we're going to uh, stay in this vein for just a second, and we're going to take a look at category, a biography on a man to study for our time. Again, a really big name author here. John big Meacham. Name writer. Yeah. Right. John Meacham, American writer, historian, presidential biographer, is out with his new book. And then there was Light, Abraham Lincoln. Um, I know there's been, yeah. he's probably one of the most highly written presidents ever. I mean, there's most books that are written about this, uh, this particular president. So I'm, I'm curious to see what John Meacham does with him. He's, Meacham is a, a Pulitzer Prize winning author. He won it for his book on ja Andrew Jackson. He's written about Jefferson, FDR, the first Bush. Um, but he's on this new book, he's focusing on Abraham Lincoln, um, the man who rallied a divided America to embrace the better angels of our nature. Uh, he writes about a very human Lincoln, uh, a man mm -hmm. who's imperfect, but um, he's more than any than many men have ever been. Right, and it is a full biography, as I recall. Yeah. This book yeah. is going to be birthed to, through his assassination, so yeah. you're going to get the full story. Yeah, and again, these are uh, you know it's a biography, presidential biography, but these are very readable authors. Right. Yeah. Uh, another uh, this is another big name author here who uh, uh, I, I think everybody's heard of the name, even if they haven't read the, his work. But we've got John Irving coming out with a book, The Last Chairlift. Uh, interesting premise. It, it sounds kind of like him in some ways and not. John um, Irving, when was the last time he had a book? It's got to be at least six, seven years, I think. Yeah. Uh, in this one, we have a ghost, a story of ghosts and skiing, beginning with a slalom skier who gets pregnant in Aspen, Colorado, and then in 1941, and then following her son during his own voyage to Aspen where he seeks to make sense of his conception, the story of his conception. So it sounds kind of like John Irving, the little bit I, I'm familiar with his, the couple books I've read by him, um, but obviously in his hands and his following yeah. and his background as a writer. Yeah, it's going to be see how interesting how um, people respond. Yeah. We got another huge name yeah. coming out. Cormac uh, McCarthy. Actually, two books. Yeah, this is incredible. Um, so the category to Cormac, acknowledge. Yeah, that. Cormac McCarthy who wrote uh, the Road, uh, All the Pretty Horses, uh, No Country for Old yeah. Men, and, and several others. So all of those have had been made into movies. Yeah, you know? so a lot of uh, great books, big name. So the category, we had to acknowledge, award-winning author back after 16 years seclusion. Wow. So he hasn't written and published in 16 years, and not just published, but now he's got two books out. So you can buy them separately or as a box set. <coughs> um, this duology is coming from an 87-year-old author who hasn't written, published in 16 years. Probably been writing, but not published. So anyway, uh, in this story, the premise, we have two novels, uh, kind of an intriguing puzzle here. The Passenger tells a sprawling saga uh, while the story of Stella, Stella Maris unfolds in dialogue. And together they create a story of a grieving brother and sister. So yeah, I Yeah, it's really interesting. I wonder why he decided to write this one. Right. Like one book is a novel and the other one is just dialogue. I mean that's right. really different. So I'm um, looking forward to it. In his hands and what I've read by him before, this could be yeah, interesting. I mean sixteen years after I think was it the road was his last one? Or maybe it was No Country for Old Women, but yeah. those are fairly dark novels. Right. I would imagine he would need to some time to get away from it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know Recover him personally. Yeah. I'm just projecting. Yeah, speculating. So we're going to take a quick look or a sneak peek at uh, a few November titles, partially because the names are so big with the books that are coming out. Uh, the first <coughs> one is a historical mystery, which is almost an understatement. This book sounds way beyond. I'm, I'm going I'm to pre-order my copy when I get home today. By Robert Harris? Yes. Yeah, so Robert Harris's new book um, coming out in November is The Devil's Blaze. Robert Harris is a British author. You probably know him from Fatherland, Enigma, Pompeii. Um, this book is a thrilling murder mystery set in London, 1943, starring Sherlock Holmes. Um, so we have the great detective set in World War II uh, London. He's there to f um, figure out why this mysterious string of assassinations thought to be the work of the Nazis. So Holmes must team up with his ultimate enemy, Professor James Moriarty. So we have to. So we're seeing Harris's mid-century take on one of literature's most iconic villains, 
it's just one of the many reasons to be excited about yeah. the Devil's Blaze. Well, for me, there's a lot here. I love the historical context. Yeah. Uh, I'm somebody who grew up, I'll admit it, uh, yeah, Basil Rathbone, Sunday afternoons, Sherlock Holmes. I love the time period setting World War II. Sherlock Holmes, obviously, one of my all-time favorite detective uh, stories. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so and again, in the hands of Robert Harris, something yeah. to look forward to. I mean, yeah. he doesn't go away. This character, peop many people write about him. Right, Anthony right. Horowitz has a series about him. I mean, more recent. Yeah, there there's are, something uh, about him. Right, people, Sherlock Holmes yeah. has been grabbed by a lot of authors as somebody to work with. All right, next category, major gear shift here again. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna in the category of fresh stories with insightful reflections. I believe this author's second book. Right, um, um, we have. Uh, the former First Lady of the United States, uh, Michelle Obama's new book is The Light We Carry, Overcoming an Uncertain Time. Um, she, of course, wrote her best-selling memoir, Becoming, um, a few years ago. And in her new book, she uh, shares the practical wisdom and the powerful strategies for staying hopeful and balanced through difficult times. And she points out that there may be no tidy solutions or pithy answers to life's big questions, but Michelle Obama shows us how we can all locate and lean on a set of tools to help us better navigate and remain, uh, navigate change and remain steady. Yeah, obviously difficult times, certainly. Uh, we could use a little advice sure. or insight. Absolutely. All right, and then, I, definitely not uh, least, even though last, the last book we want to recommend, another big name author, uh, exciting category. I really like these stories. I know she's one of your favorites. Uh, detective mystery, which is understating it. More importantly, for those of you who know the author, Inspector Gamache is back with an exclamation point. Yes. Uh, for Louise Penny fans can all breathe a sigh of relief. I know they've been waiting with um, nervousness because Louise Penny always comes out every year for the past 17 years. She's come out with a new book in August, and this book is not coming out until November. We've had people calling the library, where's Louise Penny's new book? We're, they can't wait. Well, it's here. It's going to be coming in November, so hang tight, folks. Ch uh, Chief Inspector Ahmad Gamash is back, and um, he teams up. Um, he, in his latest case here, is, concerns a young man and a woman who return to the idyllic town of Three Pines, Quebec, which is where all of the books take place. Um, these, this, these young men and young women, their mother was murdered there years ago, and that killing was the very first case that Gamache and his protege turned son-in-law, Jean-Guy Beauvoir, worked on together. The mystery why the um, victim's children would return to Three Pines all these le years later brings back haunting memories, both for Gamache and Beauvoir, and the add in the discovery of a creepy room that's been sealed off for 150 years. And it seems like all of Three Pines' um, darkest stories are about to crawl into the light. Sounds like a great read. It does. Yeah. And she's, she's great. Her story, the characters feel like really real people. And, mm -hmm. you know, Three Pines, are, and I know people think that it's actually a real, a real little village mm -hmm. in Quebec, but it's not. So. Okay. Well, Janine, thank you very much. A lot of great titles. Oh, yeah. Big authors coming out. A lot of books to look forward to this fall. Well, uh, I'm happy to, to be here to share all of this good news with everybody. So. All right. Thank you for being here. Uh, you've been watching Bookshelf on PHTV4. Thank you for watching and good reading. <laughs>